Hello, beta testers. I can't help but follow future revolution updates, because <laughs> just look at it. It's been two years since Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, and 15 years since the first Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Both of which I regard so fondly, I'm gonna be returning to play them. So follow me on Twitch if you want to be a part of that. So, I'm in Future Revolution's replies with another user, and we're both drooling over a wishlist skin for Carol Danvers, who's known more as Captain Marvel these days, but used to be known as Ms. Marvel. When Marvel wasn't afraid to allow a powerful woman to have explosively good looks as an extra power to overwhelm their opponents. Danny Koo of Marvel Games messaged me, urging me to check the last frame of the trailer they released a year back. Okay. So, here we are. Oh, oh boy, enhance, enhance. Great scat. Summers. So, what are you, what are you, what are you guys trying to do? You trying to hype me? You trying to... Trying to make fans happy over here? Well, congratulations. You did it. Because some of us are simple people. You know, we know what we like. If we get it, you're gonna get it. In this case, it being interest. If you're not following future evolution updates, allow me to get you up to speed. I photoshopped this picture of all the villains teased so far, but the teases are coming down the pipeline so fast that this is already outdated. If you want this picture without the watermark, I'll have it linked in the description. So for the villains so far, Nebula, Kingpin, Loki, Thanos, Red Skull, Ultron, Modok, Green Goblin, Mordo, and Yellow Jacket. On top of the heroes so far, Black Widow, Doctor Strange, Ms. Marvel, Spider-Man, Iron Man, Storm, Captain America, and Star-Lord. A recent tweet says, Fight foes, rack up points, and earn bragging rights. It's so simple, even a Spider-Man could use it. Probably. End quote. See, I love that it takes a shot at Spider-Man, and that it also says, A Spider-Man, singular, implying that there's more than one. Which there will be, because this game is multiverse-focused. So, you can expect different incarnations or variations of heroes and villains. A great little piece of plot just to explain the ability for us to customize how we look, which goes a long way these days in making an experience feel unique. This picture has villains like Ultron, Red Skull, Modoc, but it also has Strange, Spidey, Star-Lord, and Captain America. It could be a portal to another dimension. But I can't help but notice the grid pattern and wonder if it's some sort of simulation where you can fight heroes and villains. Uh, I have no idea yet. Here's hoping we can play villains since it is a multiverse game and there should certainly be a universe where all the heroes are villains and the villains are heroes. Come on now. Infinite Perseverator. Future Revolution will be Marvel's first open world game. Developed by Netmarvel, who handles Marvel Future Fight, and judging by the heroes on display in that game, I'll be happy to see faithful representations of beloved Marvel heroes in their older incarnations, their more modern looks, as well as imaginative new takes that make you wonder what kind of dimension they may have come from. This is a mobile game which to me feels like it'll be this game's biggest hurdle. The reason that I'm so on board is when I ask myself what my favorite ensemble Marvel experience is, it's hands down Marvel Ultimate Alliance, and I feel like they should be able to manage something better in all the years that have passed since that. However, in every comment section for Marvel Future Evolution, you can find people hoping that this comes to PC and console, and I'm right there with you. Genshin Impact is a phenomenon, and even if the initial plan for this game is mobile, I doubt that the suits behind this game are just shrugging off the billion dollars that Genshin made in the last six months, especially if Future Evolution is sufficiently successful. PvP has been teased, uh, what they're calling a raid has been teased, and the more they show, the more you just want another trailer. But it looks like Danny Koo will be talking about this come May 27th, so hopefully then, 
there will be more information. Open world Marvel game sounds incredible on paper, especially if it's free to try. But these days, people have expectations thanks to Genshin Impact. I spoke lightly about this in my last video, go watch that if you haven't already, and you're going to be hearing that game's name often. Not because of my specific feelings on it, but because of why its name is constantly being spoken. Genshin is a gotcha game, which means it's really not playing around about trying to get your money. That hustle is serious. That's where and how they made that money. But you know what that means? It earns the people playing and loving that game. Genshin's shockingly high production values grant surprising experiences to most players who had no idea what they were in for when they started playing. Vast areas ripe to be explored that you'll initially be walking across, but soon you're freezing the surface of water, you're creating wind currents to ride up and then fly across as you roam, explore, collect resources, harvest materials to incrementally become more powerful puzzles to solve, monuments to discover, diverse heroes, villains, enemy types, music, hubs, NPCs, charming stories, consistent events that transform the game with experiences that'll knock the, I didn't think this was possible, right the hell out of your mouth. That in a Marvel universe? Come on, man. Of course we're on board. Am I saying that I want a dating sim, an Animal Crossing, or Fall Guys minigames in a Marvel open world game? Not necessarily. But you know what? If Netmarble made a meaty, multiple hour, social, multiplayer experience that players loved so much that they were going to pay into it so that Netmarble made so much money that they could just spend it on crap like that, I certainly wouldn't complain. Regardless of your orientation, I'm sure that we would all love to go on a date with grumpy old Wolverine. People don't need to have seen to know Spider-Man. And Netmarble's future evolution is granting him to everyone. Not some people with a PlayStation device, not a weird specific vision of Spider-Man, but whichever Spider-Man you know, you love, you prefer. And the types of people who think, oh, that's childish, that's irrelevant, they don't have to get it. They also don't have to make money. But I think Netmarble understands. They understand the difference. And they won't have to tell us that they're fans, they'll be able to show us. And that kind of thing goes a long way. I'm looking forward to more information on this because a digital Marvel world that I can walk around in, fight, share experiences with other people, it's exactly what I want. And it's exactly what a lot of other people have wanted since Marvel Heroes was taken away. A lot of people wanted a Marvel Ultimate Alliance, but with the graphics of what we're seeing in this other game. So, I appreciate this. I hope that you guys will continue to impress us with what you have to showcase in this game. To everyone watching, thank you. Like the video, and I'll see you in the next one.